Crucial Knowledge offers two courses in safety management systems based on FAA Advisory Circular 120-92A. This one you are watching is video based and is intended to introduce all of your organization's employees to the basic concepts of SMS and organizational factors. What will SMS mean to them? How will their daily tasks change? What will they be expected to do? And what is the purpose of SMS? This introduction follows the logic found in common human factors premises and makes the connection to organizational factors and SMS as a method to provide global protection for your enterprise. A 25 question quiz follows the one hour video and though there are no explicit prerequisites, it is strongly recommended that enrolling students already have exposure to basic human factors concepts, which we also offer in online courses. This video course examines group dynamics, how SMS relates to Dr. James Reason's theories, employee reporting systems, reactive, proactive, and predictive data, having a just culture, types of risk, return on investment, safety auditing, change management, and the four pillars of safety management systems, policy, risk management, safety assurance, and promotion. This is a good list. The final portion of the video is a case study of an actual incident. And using the discussion questions included in the seven page PDF student handout, students can engage in group discussions to see where the application of SMS might have prevented the incident. What follows are two very brief snippets from the video. The Federal Aviation Administration, the European Aviation Safety Agency, Air Canada and aviation regulators in other countries either have adopted or will be adopting regulations requiring aviation service providers, airports and airlines to have safety management systems. In the U.S., the FAA has issued Advisory Circular 120-92A, which describes the FAA's expectations for safety management systems. The Advisory Circular is not much fun to read and most of it is the concern of management, but some aspects will fall on everyone within a company, from the janitor and security guard to the top dog. In case you're ever on a game show, we want you to know something about safety management systems, and we'll also acquaint you with how it might affect your day-to-day -day work responsibilities. First off, safety management systems are usually pictured as a little building with four columns. The columns are called pillars, and these pillars are the basic structure of any safety management system. The pillars are policy, safety risk management, safety assurance, and promotion. The policy pillar expects management commitment and funding, and the appointment of a person to be the lead safety management system officer. This section also calls for the formation of a group to serve as an emergency accident investigation team. And this pillar also expects the company to write a safety management system document that is similar in style and content to a quality manual like you would see in an ISO or AS9100 registered company. Safety management systems rely a lot on the gathering and analysis of information and data, including data describing current and past events, and then using that data to fix holes or plug gaps in the organizational Swiss cheese and also to analyze the data to identify trends that may be developing so that fixes can be applied, even before they are needed. A safety management system is hungry for information, and the best source to gather that information is through any and all people who work in your company. You are, collectively and individually, the eyes and ears and touch of the organization. So an organization setting up a safety management system will also set up an employee reporting system. Such a system can and should come in many forms, including such things as suggestion boxes, email reporting, phone reporting, talking to leads, focals and management, discussions within regular scheduled staff meetings and so on.
A safety management system is better off with too much information than it would be with too little. So make it a point to participate and sound off when you have suspicions or doubts about anything that seems or could be unsafe. Yes, but what if you don't want to rock the boat? What if you don't want to make waves? Doesn't a person run the risk of being tagged as a squealer or a whistleblower? Not if a company's safety management system includes a just culture, which is a necessary ingredient. A what culture? Having a just culture, a culture based on fairness and justice. A just culture is one where everyone treats everyone else in a just and fair manner. This doesn't mean that you can do anything you like and get away with it. It just means that everyone recognizes that we are humans, and humans sometimes make errors, and, if we're smart, we'll learn from the errors rather than punish the person who made the error.